Welcome back to the Lazy Millionaires Book Club. This month, I'm doing all the heavy lifting so you can cut all the corners. I'll be summarizing books from the very brightest business folk from the most successful entrepreneurs. Today, we're looking at the classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And if you watch all the way through to the end, I'll reveal my favorite takeaways from the book. Selling over 20 million copies since 1936 is one of the most influential books of all time. It shows you how to be a leader, how to win people over, and how to make yourself a better, more likable person. It can be summarized in four parts. Fundamental techniques in handling people. Ways to make people like you. How to win people to your way of thinking. And how to change people's behavior without giving them offense. Ready? Let's begin. Fundamental techniques in handling people. Let's start with this. Avoid criticizing people. It doesn't take much of a mental leap to realize that criticizing people won't win you any friends. But what can you do instead? Let's imagine you're a magazine editor for Drainpipe Monthly. Come on guys, we all read it. Your designer has done a truly terrible job of creating the cover for this month's issue. It would be easy to criticize your designer and tell them they've done a terrible job, but that would only lead to feelings of resentment and anger from the designer. Instead, you could ask questions to try and understand why your designer has created such a bad design. It could all simply be a misunderstanding, and it would be far easier to suggest changes after you find out what the underlying issue is. After all, it could be your fault for not specifying correctly, and the designer would very much be on board with that idea, rather than it being their fault. In short, avoid criticizing. Next, give honest appreciation. There's a difference between flattery and appreciation. Appreciation is sincerely taking up someone else's good points, and it's unselfish and generous. Flattery is the opposite. It's selfish and false. You're just telling people what they want to hear, and it'll be very hard to sound genuine. They'll realize you don't mean any of it and won't trust you. Anne Boleyn flattered Henry VIII for years, and look where it got her. Certainly not a head. Ways to make people like you. Become genuinely interested in people. People love to talk about themselves. Listen to others and you will get them to open up and trust you. Imagine this scenario. At a party, one guy is hogging the room. He's dominating the conversation. No one else can get a word in. You try and say something about your Morris dancing, but he just talks over you. He's not listening to anyone else because they're not as interesting as he is, at least in his opinion. He doesn't realize you're all thinking, I wish this guy chokes to death on a cocktail sausage. He goes home without making a single friend. Now imagine this. It's the same guy at the same party, but this time he listens to everyone. In fact, he listens twice as much as he talks. He's genuinely interested in hearing about Morris dancing, and he's asking loads of questions about it. He may not realise it, but he's made a lot of friends that evening. And of course, because he has shown so much interest in you, you naturally feel like showing interest in him. And in business, this will make you allies. Remember people's names. There's nothing people like more than the sound of their own name. If you call someone Bernard, when their name is actually Alice, you've shown you haven't been paying attention, and you probably need to get some glasses. If it helps, write the name down. It's easy to do in your phone. Because if you can call a new acquaintance by their name, they'll feel special. And it's something that doesn't take a lot of effort, but is really appreciated. You know this too, because you feel special when someone remembers your name. We all do. How to win people to your way of thinking. Avoid arguments. Arguments are futile, and here's why. No one ever really wins an argument. Each person believes that they are right. But even if you do win, all you've done is make the other person feel stupid, and they'll resent you. Think of it like a messy divorce. The court case has cost you millions and your children hate you. But at least you got the cat. Doesn't that make you feel like a winner? No. 
Instead, find areas where you can agree. Apologise for mistakes you've made and promise to consider their opinion carefully. And bingo! You've settled the dispute without having to resort to a pistol duel. Never tell anyone directly they're wrong, and admit being wrong when you are. That doesn't sound right. What if they are wrong? Shouldn't you tell them so, loudly to their face, maybe in front of their friends and family at a wedding? Best not. If you feel strongly, it's better to prove your point subtly. Phrases like, well, I might be wrong, but, are always good. They show you're willing to downplay the situation. And when this happens, your friend might concede the point, without feeling humiliated. And always admit your own mistakes. By doing this as quickly as possible, you're taking ownership of them. So when your boss is angry you left the cage open and the gorilla escaped, own up to it at once. Take responsibility. They will be far more likely to treat you sympathetically if you admit your mistakes openly. Let the other person do most of the talking. This goes back to the point earlier about being a good listener. You'll learn things that could be useful and you'll convince them you're genuine, which leads to the next important point. Let the other person feel that the idea is theirs. People invest more in a project if they feel they have come up with the idea themselves. Add your ideas slowly and show excitement when they pick these up and run with them. Now you have a team. You'll have them designing and testing that jetpack before you know it. Appeal to their nobler motives. This is where you talk to the part of them that wants to do good. The part that is honest and fair. We all want to think of ourselves as idealists. Encourage that in others and they will follow you. Throw down your challenge. Now you've listened to the points of view and appealed to their highest ideals. Throw down your challenge. Make it exciting. Fire them up and they will follow you like a true leader. Imagine Winston Churchill, one of history's greatest leaders. What if he hadn't told the nation to fight them on the beaches? What if he hid under a table with a napkin over his head and told everyone to run away? Would you respect a leader like that? I don't think so. Be a leader. How to change people without giving offence. Take time to praise. You've heard the old saying, give credit where credit's due. Always begin with the praise. Take a child in a school. He's made some improvement in maths, but needs to do more. Instead of saying, Well done, Timmy, you're getting the hang of equations, but your algebra looks like a donkey has done its business on your homework. Try this. Well done, Timmy, you're really getting the hang of equations. Work as hard on your algebra, and you'll soon get good at that too. Timmy will feel pleased with the praise, and hopefully filled with desire to get better at his algebra, and he won't start crying. It's a win-win. Ask questions instead of giving orders. Again, this is all about making everyone in the room feel like they have a stake in the project. Encourage their ideas and you'll have a devoted team. Simply give orders and they'll feel ignored and won't work as hard. The project won't really be theirs. Let the other person save face. Don't shout at someone when they make a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes and it's human. Use considered words and show some kindness and understanding. You may have to correct someone, but you don't have to humiliate them as well. If you must correct a mistake, make it seem like an easy one, like, it's no big deal. Make the other person happy to act on your suggestions. The key here is to appeal to their imagination, and to use the word yes a lot. In short, just guide them along to your way of thinking. Okay. Now let's have a quick recap of everything we've covered. Firstly, appreciate, don't criticise. Secondly, to make people like you, you need to listen to them and show genuine interest. Remember, it's all about them and not you. Thirdly, you can win people to your way of thinking by avoiding arguments, appealing to their nobler motives and throwing down a challenge. Finally, you can change people's behaviour without offending them by asking questions, instead of shouting orders at them. There you are, you're already a better person and a better leader. I hope you enjoyed this summary. The biggest change I made to my life after reading this book was to really make a concerted effort to remember people's names. I used to be terrible at it, 
but it makes a huge difference for very little effort. If you want to dive into the book in more details, I've left links below in the description. And otherwise, see you next time.